image isn't anywhere near as important as how good is the tune. This is know? true. So uh, if he ain't a looker, <laughs> you got a shot. <laughs> You're fine, darling. You're fine. <laughs> So you've been all over the country. Have you gone uh, out of the country to Europe or? You know, I haven't. No, Canada, but no. I did a tour with the Pogues that went up into oh, Canada cool. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And um, no, I haven't done Europe. Uh, my friend Alejandro Escovedo, also from Austin, is going over there with his band Buick McCain. So I've been pitching him on taking me. Cool. I got to go out. I'm going out with a band called Moxie Fruvel. Fru huh. Fruvis, Moxie Fruvis, who are from Canada, oddly enough. I'm doing a cross-country tour with them. As soon as I get back from Cape Cod and vacationing for a week, I just did all these miles. I deserve it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I deserve it. And the jokes, the jokes. He sell, tells wonderful, dirty jokes on stage. It's just great. And uh, where did the, that come out of, uh, you know, filling up time when you're tuning your guitar? Or is that... You know, we're like... It you know, seems really, like such an organic thing. That I'll tell you, it came from two different areas. One, my father was a... Uh, worked at Carrier Air Conditioning. He was a buyer, which meant that all the things that weren't internally manufactured there he would buy from other salesmen. So he dealt with salesmen, so there was a lot of jokes. So my father was Jewish, so there was a lot of that cool. Catskill Jewish tradition uh -huh, of, uh -huh. of joke telling. Uh -huh. um, and then that stop starting thing, I remember seeing one of my favorite bands was The Replacements. And I remember, and they would stop and start tunes. And I remember the first time I saw it, how ar arresting it was. You know, people, if, when you go up there and a band's playing, and all of a sudden they sort of stop, like every, everybody's heads turns because mm -hmm. they naturally assume something's wrong. What's what's wrong? Why are they stopping? Mm -hmm. And I sort of stole it from them. I thought, you know, I, I had a real hard time putting comedy in the act because all my people that I like, I was a rock fan. I, I'd never really been a, a folk, I mean, I respect folk music for the form that it is, but I don't really know that much about it. And I think that it, it requires a lot of, you know, it's almost like um, archaeology or something. I mean, it really, I mean, mm -hmm. I th there's lengthy yeah. traditions of, mm -hmm of you know of english and scottish uh folk stuff and if you're a good song you know folk singer you should know that stuff but i don't i was a rock guy and the rock guys that i liked like uh, um although you know richard Pryor and lenny bruce mm. were just as i loved those guys when i was a kid as much as i loved like lennon and and hendrix you know but like guys like lennon and hendrix and the replacements and the clash all the bands that i liked they never did anything funny. It was not cool to do. So I, when I was in a band, I never did any of that comedy stuff in the band. It took me a long time for me to go, you know, this... And I'd go down the dressing room, though, and I'd entertain everybody in the dressing room. Mm -hmm. I'd go, well, this, you know, this is stupid. This is unquestionably part of me. Mm -hmm. And I'm up there as a solo. I ought to utilize this. And then uh, it, t it took a while to get over that hump where I thought, well, it's not cool. And then I realized... I'm not cool, so screw it. But it's, you know? like, it's like a persona yeah. that you have, too. While you're telling the jokes, it's like, you know, it's like, well, well fuck you if you're going to take a joke. And, and I'm thinking, man, he must have played in so many places where people were like, what the? Yeah, you know, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. You yeah. just got this, uh, you yeah, have to yeah. have this veneer. It is fun, you know, I don't, know, you I don't know where it. It, where it went from. You're absolutely right, you know. It was real hard at the beginning. I don't know if it... Being on a major label adds credibility to it. I don't know if I've done it so much now that, because unquestionably, like I played New Mexico, and there's like 40 to 80 people that know who I am now because of the record and, and radio stuff. So little by little, you can sense that it's building. So maybe that's it, you know? But there was a, a long period of time where folk clubs just thought, ooh, you know, he's way too aggressive. We don't want him. And rock clubs were like, well, he doesn't have a bass player. He doesn't have a drummer. We don't want him here. So it took a, it was a really hard, a lot of it is probably just, you know, bang, did I hit anything? Bang, did I hit anything? Bang, did I, you know, just keep shooting mm -hmm, until, mm -hmm. you know. But then, so when you get, I got something, you asked, I think the initial question was, did I meet my manager, Jane? Um, <laughs> in, uh, I, I, you know, I got signed by Peter Lubin to Mercury. Then my wife had a difficult time with Texas. I, she liked Austin, but uh -huh. she did. So she said, you know, you ought to be in New York anyway. And she was right. And so, boom, boom, we, you know, moved to New York. All our families in upstate New York. Uh -huh. And um, so I met my manager here. She cool. used to manage Patty Smith, you know, when I'm she's wonderful. mad about Patty Smith. Oh, she's great. So I, they, my A&R guy said. She's a bona fide manager. Yeah, she she's, you have a great rapport with her. Great rapport. We're pals. It's hell. We go through hell together. Really? So. So yeah, we're you pals. Have to have, you have to be a pal because this business can be drive you crazy. Yeah. And if you don't get along with your manager, it's like, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, But she's very, uh, it's, it's hard, you know, it was hard for me because I did have, I mean, th when I moved to Austin, the first thing I did lit was buy a staple gun to hang posters. I mean, oh. I did, 
Oh, I did. I mean, I did every. I did everything. <laughs> yeah, my, yeah, I always yeah. did everything myself. Everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mailing lists, write the songs, uh -huh. make the cassettes. You yeah. know, uh, I had a little dat machine in my house. I mean, everything. Mm -hmm. Hang the posters, book the gigs, and you're used to doing that, and then you do it a certain way, and then to relinquish some of that mm. is difficult. Yeah. You know, and trusting that person, and I'm sure for her too. I'm sure she's had. You know, a lot of, and what am I going to be like? And I'm pretty easy going, really. I, I, I just, I like, all I want to do is work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? So I mean, you went from working every now and then to working a lot all well, the time. Well, I was always, no, I was always gigging. I mean, I, even when I lived in Albany, I, I still did, I would, I could do 200. I, a matter of fact, when I was in a band, I did one year 287 one-nighters. <sighs> and that was three sets, and I wrote all the material, and I wrote it. Oh, my God. And we had 22 can light show and a much bigger front end than Ireland's grocery. I mean, it was like two 18s on each side, two 15s on each side. I did that for years. You now, know? when you say two 18s and two 15s, what are you Speakers, talking about? Speakers, you know, your front okay. end. I mean, it was a large system in a 20-foot yeah. truck, right. you know. So, I mean, dumb in many respects, kind of dinosaur-esque, but that's so what... So, the, all these guys just kind of, tr you know, trucked around with you and... And, uh, yeah, we had a band. I mean, like, kind of yeah. like it is. You had a dream. You had a band. We had a sound. You know. I mean. Was it anything like what you're doing now? Um, it was. A, you know what it was like. It was like. Um, like a cross between the Ramones and maybe like the Iron City House Rockers. Like it def definitely had like a Jersey kind of. Uh, you know, E Street Band or uh, Southside Johnny esque yeah. slant to it, mm -hmm. but everything was very fast, like the Ramones. Mm -hmm. So, in in many, I mean, as I was the rhythm player, so a lot of that probably fast. I, I you know, I've definitely. And you sang. Yeah, I was a front. I was a front. So guy. when you when you got alone on stage, was that did that like scare you at yeah. first? To, to oh yeah, hence the name Ham on Trial. Your, sure. Hearing your right, that's where the name came from. Right. It had to be right. where the name came from. Right. They really gonna lynch me? Oh, they gonna well, let me go? Because I wouldn't. You, you, a lot of it has to do with, and I see most of my fears come from the way that I feel. My like, for instance, if you said to me, "It's this solo guy. Um, he plays an acoustic guitar. He's bald." Uh, and he, you know, yells, there's spoken word, there's poetry, there's, uh, j jokes, uh, you know, I, I would probably go, and, oh, and then you said, ended up, and it's a rock and roll act, <laughs> I might say, eh, I don't know if I'm going to make that show, uh, you know, so yeah. I understand, and I, so for my own thing, I understand how difficult, I never get upset if nobody gets it, I mean, at first, because I don't know if I would even, t it's a lie. But I mean, people are into it because it's. I try to make it as entertaining as possible. Well, do you sell more CDs after you're performing? Oh yeah. Than that you do off the shelf when they haven't seen you yet.